These wavy hair were so annoying to draw, but I have found some of the easiest way to draw them out for an absolute beginner. So follow along and let's begin to start. Step number one is block out the main shape. The key to drawing hair is to break it down into simple shapes. So that's why I'm using here a lighter pencil such as mechanical pencil to sketch out an initial outline of the overall contour of the hair. So this should be done very lightly. Step number two is sketching the forms. After the basic contour sketch, I'm going to enhance it a bit more by sketching the forms that represent the individual clump of hair by giving it depth so that's how you can modify your basic sketch which is ready for the further details. So take your time and draw the fundamental forms that you can make out of the photograph that you are using as a reference. Imagine each of the subsection as a separate piece of a puzzle that must be assembled. Step number three is lighting the outlines. So before going into the further details, I'm using a kneaded eraser to lighten up the sketch. Step number four is indentation. Now I'm using the technique which is properly termed as indenting or impressing. The outcome of this technique is a pristine, white, parallel sided line with a sharpness that erasing cannot obtain. I'm using the indenting tool which is a wooden one. You can grab the nail art tools for this. Only make sure that you're following the hair directions using a reference image. Step number 5 is guidelines for the pre-shading. Firstly, I'm going to shade the base layer with the directional shading using the reference image. Here you can see that I'm trying to build each clump of the hair individually with an eraser, stump, graphite all together rather than going all in the whole hair. Step number six is shading. At this point, to create a depth in the hair, we need to shade light, middle, dark tonal values so for that i'm using here in first with the outline of the dark areas of the strands and then adding the blended base layer of the graphite you can draw shapes for the highlights and leave these areas blank so the white of the paper comes through step number seven is bow for the bow i'm using a mechanical pencil for shading a base layer of the bow. I'm blocking in with the lighter shade and slowly building the darker values using the reference image. And the pencil I'm using here is 6B to make it stand out in pulp. Step number 8 is strands. Moving back to the shading by working on the strands, so I am overlaying the texture of the hair by using a mechanical pencil for the sharp lines on the top of the base layer. So I'm using here a darker pencil in such a way that it looks natural, realistic and very textury. Next, find the mid-tones and dark areas of the hair to shade using a 4 or 6B pencil. Step number 9 is highlights. I'm now establishing some highlights and just pulling up some of the graphite from the highlighted areas. And to do this, I'm using a Tombow Mono Eraser. It's really helpful to get a lot of details. So it's really important when you are doing hair that you vary your shadows and highlights as well because you don't want to look at it too structured. You want it to have a lot of flow to it. Step number 10 is shadows. As I'm just working in layers, that's why I'm deepening up the shadows to add just a contrast. So I'm going in with the darker pencil along with the blender to establish the shadow. 
I'm just making sure that I'm going in with the direction of the hair so I'm only working on each clump of the hair because hair is such a large mass that you've got to draw there's a lot of different areas that you need to focus on so it's really important that you break it down into these sections rather than just doing it all in one go it will be a bit overwhelming so I'm slowly building up the layers by just applying a lot of pressure onto the pencil and this will help you to avoid the shine as well. This is why you won't get as much shine if you don't press really hard. So there are a variety of ways you can draw hair and this is one of them. Step number 11 is texture. Once we have depth in the hair, then we can think about the overlay texture. So for that, I'm using the Posca Uniball pen along with the blender to add the bright highlighted strands. So I am redefining each of the lock of the hair by just making sure that each lock of the hair has enough details to work on. So here again, I'm using the dark pencil to adjust the dark areas to have a subtle contrast. Also, I'm using mechanical pencil for the fine texture of the bow fabric along with the help of Posca pen. Then I'm using the black colored pencil and a Tombow eraser to adjust the darks and lights. Now moving on to the ribbon down there, just tweaking up some of the details for the fabric. And then last, not the least, while well, using the Posca pen for adding up some of the overlaid flyaway strands and then smudging them up with the blending stop to get a realistic look. So yeah, this is it for today's tutorial. I hope this tutorial has shown you that drawing hair doesn't have to be an intimidating process. The steps are essentially the same, however the shapes and the toner values will vary. So I will see you in the next video. Till then, bye bye.